In this video, I'll show you how to make a slab built cup using a paper cup as a template. This way you can get a nicely designed taper to your form. You can also add texture to it before or after you've assembled it using a combination of stamps, rollers, or carving. Even sprigs are possible. It's got a nice carved foot on the bottom that was done in the bone dry stage. Notice how the foot matches up and relates to the texture that's carved in there, giving the whole piece a sense of unity. One cool way to make a slab cup is to create a template. You can create a template from a paper cup. This cup may seem pretty basic, but it has a really subtle taper to it and that's a nice shape how it kind of gets wider as it goes up so what I'm gonna do is cut this cup using a utility knife you could use scissors and I see right here where the seam line is a good place to cut now I have a template and you notice it has that subtle arch to it and that can be hard to just kind of freestyle and estimate. So if you have this template, you're much better off. So here I have my quarter inch slab and I'm gonna take my template and lay it on there to maximize space on my slab in case I wanna use some of the extra, I'll stick it in the corner here and then I'll get my Fettling knife and trace the shape. Save that slab because you'll need some of it for your base. Now I'm going to flatten this edge a little bit. this one as well. I could cut it, smashing it down is just fine and that's because you want to create a nice tapered edge for attaching. If you have a really abrupt hard edge your cups just not gonna come together as well. Now I'm gonna score this edge here and I'm gonna score this back edge here because that's where it's going to come together and I want to be careful not to put any creases in this slab I want to bend it real gingerly and you'll see it's leather hard right so it's going to bend but it's still pretty stiff when you bend it it's going to kind of hold that shape a little bit whereas a wet slab is just going to kind of fall apart but it's still pliable, so it's right there, that happy medium. Got my brush with some water here, and then I have some slip here, and I'm gonna bend it carefully, and I wanna give it a really nice, continuous shape. And there, I'm gonna stick it together. You can see it was a little dry right there got a little crack in it. That's fine. I can smooth that out. It's still relatively pliable. Wooden modeling tool here. Compress that seam. And I'm going to lay it down and get inside there. Work that seam a little bit more. And then right here, where it got that little little crack, I'm going to compress that crack, smooth it out. Now I have a little bit of an indentation, and I can take some clay from my slab. It's at the same moisture level. I just tore that off of my leftover slab, and then I can score and stick it on there. Looks like a really nice shape already. 
So I'll make sure that this is pretty round. I have some of my leftover slab. If you have another cup that same size, or maybe you were smart and you did it beforehand, you can mark the shape of the bottom. It's fine to just set it on here and trace it, but here, now I know I have a perfect circle and it lines up real nice. So now I will score this. I'm dipping my scoring tool into some water. See, I'm dipping it. So I'm adding moisture while I'm scoring. Get my brush, add a little bit more. Score the bottom. Look at my circle there. Line it up. Pressure. Stick it down on there. I'll cut it out real carefully, leaving a little bit of extra material so that I can smooth it into the rest of the cup. I'll smooth it out a little bit with my wooden rib, and then I'll address that bottom edge, just make sure it's not too sharp down there, and then bang it against the table just a little bit to make sure that it sits flat. have some score marks in there and I'm gonna get a wet brush and just kind of smooth them out down there This cup has gotten a bit stiff as I've been working on it, which was great for creating a nice clean shape. But now I want to add some texture on it and I need it to be a bit more moist so it can accept some texture. So a little trick that I can do is I have a bucket of water and I'm going to take some newspaper and dip it all the way in the water so that it's pretty wet. I'll squeeze it out so it's not like drippy wet. And now I'm gonna wrap this around the cup and I'll leave that for about five minutes. It should allow the cup to soak up some moisture. So this is a trick that you can use to re-moisten all kinds of things. But remember if it is starting to change color, starting to become bone dry, then it's not going to be able to take that moisture. So for instance, my stamps are bone dry. This clay here is still wet. The wet clay you can see is a slightly darker color. It's going to be smoother to the touch, right? This is a lighter color. It's real chalky. This you cannot re-moisten. If you try and re-moisten it, it's going to turn to mush. This with a uh, wet newspaper or if you spray it, you can re-moisten this somewhat. You can't get it back to the plastic stage, but you can kind of reactivate stiff leather hard clay, but not bone dry clay. It's been about five minutes, so I'm going to take the wet paper off of the cup and there's still a bit of water just kind of sitting on there. So now I'll wait another couple minutes so there's no standing water on it so it's not sticky. I don't want it sticky. I just want it a little bit moist. So we'll wait another couple minutes. Now it's moist but not wet. I'm going to add texture using this roller that I made, just a coil of clay, and I carved some lines in it going different directions and created these sort of eye type shapes and then poked a little hole in each of those little eye diamonds. This is bone dry. It's best if it's bisque fired but bone dry is just fine and I'm gonna roll it on the surface of this cup. I've prepared that surface so that it is moist and not 
sticky and I'm gonna support it. I'm gonna support the roller with my hand, support the cup with my hand on the inside and I'm gonna carefully roll this across the surface of the cup. With this texture it'll be hard to really line it up with another roll because it's sort of a complex texture. Maybe with something simpler you might have an easier time. I think what I'll do is I'll roll it along the bottom and then I'll allow there to be a little bit of open space there. So I'm going to just roll it along the bottom here. It's a little bit faint along the bottom, but that's okay. Now I'm going to create a line that just makes it look more intentional where, where it separates. Just create a nice kind of organic line along here. See where it's going to meet up. Okay, it goes over there. Smooth that out a little bit. And then I'll create another line down here. Make sure it lines up. And then I'll smooth this whole area out so it has some nice contrast. I'm going to use this dull pencil, make that line a little more pronounced. Right along here, getting a little bit of cracking, so I'll just compress it and smooth it out. Could add a little clay, compress it more, but I think it's going to be all right. Add some dots on that line. Yeah, now I have to fix that. That's getting a little fickle. Compress it. Score it. A little bit of water. And then I'll get some clay. my finger behind where I'm making the dots. And then here, getting a little bit of a tear, so I'll just compress that together. Add a little bit of moisture, and then I will score it and add a little bit of clay on there. I tried to get a little tricky with the rim. You know, I don't think I like that. <laughs> I think I'm going to make it straighter. Doesn't look intentional enough to me. I'll do that needle tool trick. Okay, so now I have a good straight line. And I will cut this rim off. Flare this out a little bit. And then I'll work it with the sponge. Give it a little indentation on the bottom, and now I'll sign it. I 
I let it sit out for a day and now it's close to bone dry and I know I can carve into it without squishing it so I can use my trimming tool to give it a nice crisp foot. It'll help give it some resolution. This line will kind of match that line there. It'll feel resolved. It'll tell the glaze where to stop.